All right, welcome back. I'm gonna be walking you guys through the big seven strategy. It is a division strategy that is really awesome for tons of kids because it allows students to build on their current knowledge of multiplication to solve division. So when you set up the big seven strategy, you're gonna be taking both numbers from your division equation and putting them into our big seven. So this strategy is called big seven because you start by drawing a big seven on your page. The large number in your division equation is gonna be used first and you're gonna be putting that right in the inside of your seven. And we are gonna be putting our smaller number, which for us is 21, on the side. So this strategy, like I said, it allows students to build on their current knowledge of multiplication and they get to chunk away at their larger number. So when I'm looking at this, I'm gonna be using multiplication to help me get this number down to zero. So I'm gonna start with 21 times 10. The reason why I'm gonna do that is because I know that product will be 210, which is smaller than 378. So every time I'm multiplying over here, my product needs to be smaller than what I have left in the center. And I am going until I get this number down to zero. So um, I always tell my students, you can start with smaller numbers, but the bigger you start, the easier it will be. So once I have done that, I'm going to be taking this number. I like to draw an arrow so I keep track of where I'm going, and I will be subtracting that from 378. So 8 minus 0 is 8. 7 minus 1 is 6. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay? Automatically, I look at this number and I now realize that I cannot do 21 times 10 again, so I'm going to need to think of something smaller. I am a really big fan, excuse me, of patterns, so I like to see how I can manipulate this number without actually doing any math in my head. So if I look at the number 210, I know that if I cut that in half, it'll be 105, which is smaller than this. If I cut my product in half, that means I'm going to be cutting this number in half as well. So 21 times five will be 105. I'm gonna draw an arrow just to help keep myself organized like I did before. And now I'm gonna be subtracting 105 from the 168 that I had remaining. Eight minus five is three, six minus zero is six, okay? So as you guys can see, the more that I take away, the easier it's going to become, right? I looked at this problem originally, it can seem a little bit scary for some students, but now I've been able to find things that I know I can easily multiply by and compute in my head, like 10 and five, and I'm allowing it to help me solve a harder problem. So I have some students that still might not see a pattern and they might start with 21 times one and just chunk away at that, and that's a really great way to do it. I happen to know that if I break this number on place value, it would be 20 plus one. 2 or 20 times 3 would get me 60, and 1 times 3 would get me 13. So I know that 21 times 3 is going to get me the 63 that I have remaining. Again, I like to draw an arrow, keep myself organized. Okay, 3 minus 3 is 0. 6 minus 6 is also 0. Okay, once you have taken this and gotten it all the way down to 0, your next task is going to be to add up whichever factors that you multiplied 21 by. So big seven is using the inverse operation to help solve. So now I know that I've added 10, five, and three. And when I add those things together, I get 18. Using Big 7 as a division strategy is building off of what kids already learned in earlier grades of their fact families. So if I take these two numbers and this letter, I can make four equations. So I've already been given one. 378 divided by 21 equals A, which also means that 378 divided by A would equal 21. And I could do A times 21 and get a product of 378, or I could solve 21 times A and also get the same product of 378. Big 7 was helping me by taking this strategy of multiplication and helping me solve. 
21 times 10 plus 5 plus 3 got me a final product of 378.